Welcome to Kids Corner. I'm so glad you joined us today. We're going to have another exciting story about Joseph. And remember that of all the people in the Bible, in the Old Testament, Joseph reminds us more of Jesus than anyone else. Oh, it's an exciting story. I'm glad you tuned in today. But first, Eddie has something to say. Well, I'm so glad to be here today. I, I need to have some friends. You know, there were some kids and I thought they were my friends, but now they, they call me names and they say, Eddie, you just leave. We don't want you around anymore. You know, Eddie, you're bothering us. Could you just scram? Oh, it's been so hard. You know, I thought they were my friends, but I almost feel like Eddie's being bullied and I don't like it at all. Eddie, did you know that the Bible has something to say about that? The Bible? No, I didn't. But I want to tell you, they've been mean to Eddie, but I haven't punched them. And I haven't called them names. Oh, yeah, I felt like it, but I didn't do it. No, I didn't. But, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, tell me, what does the Bible have to say? Well, Eddie, the Bible says that we are to love our enemies. So you're telling me that I'm supposed to love these guys? Man, did I tell you how mean they were? You want me to love them? Whoa, that's gonna be tough. Wow. Well, Eddie, that's not all the Bible has to say. You mean there's more? Did I tell you? These guys, they call me names, and they say words that I wouldn't repeat. Nope, they just gonna cuss me out. They are just not nice. Oh, but okay, I'm supposed to love them. All right, what else, what else am I supposed to do? Well, Eddie, the Bible says that you are supposed to bless those that curse you. Well, I can just say it now. If I went up to them and said, okay, guys, I'll bless you, <laughs> they would think that I was just being weird. I think they'd be meaner to me than they were before. I just can't say it. Well, Eddie, you know, when you bless somebody, it doesn't mean that you say, I bless you. It means that you say something nice to them. Something nice to them. Hey, wait a minute. Did you get that story right? They're mean to me. They're just mean all the time. And they bully. And they're just not nice. And you want me to love them? And then you want me to say something nice? Well, it's all I can do to not say mean things to them. But I haven't yet. No, Eddie's trying to be good. But to say something good, wow, that's going to be hard. Well, Eddie, you know, there's even more that you should do. What? I, I need to love them. Then you need to bless them and say something nice. There's more. Whoa, what can that be? Well, Eddie, you know, the Bible says that uh, if they hate you, and it sounds like that they kind of do, yep. Then the Bible says that you are to do good to them. Do good? Come on. I haven't hit them. I haven't punched them out. But that's just about the best I can do. You're saying I have to think of something nice? You know, loving them, that was hard. And then blessing them, whoa, that's a toughie. And now I have to think of something nice to do? Well, Eddie, that's right. And you know, the Bible doesn't stop there. Ah, ah. Nope. The Bible says that you need to pray for them. Well, I can tell you, I've been praying for them. I've been praying, Lord, take them out. Just take those guys out. Don't let them just even breathe another second. 
Eddie, now that's not what the Bible means. Well, I didn't think so. So I have to pray for them. So I have to love them. Then I have to say good things to them. Whoa. Then I have to do good, something nice. Ah. And now I have to pray for them. Boy, that's going to be a lot for Eddie to do. You know, those guys, they're so mean. You know, this thing about following God, some people say it's easy, but I can tell you right now, it's going to be hard. I'm going to need God to help me out. Guys, I got to go. I got a lot of work to do. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. I love you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
for their enemies. There have been some other people that even to the point of the death of their own children, they have prayed for those that are persecuting them. You can only do that through God's strength. And that is what our verse says today. And if you can learn to do this in your life, your life will be different. And people will look at you and they'll say, there's something different about you. And this, of course, is found in the book of Matthew. That's in the New Testament, chapter 5, verse 44. It says, but I say to you, you know who's speaking? It's Jesus. He says, but I say to you, Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. So we are going to learn the motions. And the motions are, but I say to you, because it's Jesus speaking. And it goes, love your enemies. Enemies are people you're at odds with. So love your enemies enemies and then bless. Nice things are coming out of your mouth. Say something nice. Bless those who curse you. Bad things. Bless those who curse you and then do good. Find something good you can do for those who hate you. And then it goes pray for those who spitefully use you and then persecute you. Ah, that's a lot. Can you do those motions? Let's see. You did a great job. Let's try it one more time. That was wonderful. Okay, you got to do it again. You can sing it and you can do the motions. Now the hard part is asking the Lord to give you the strength to do this. Ah, oh, your lives will change. Now last week we learned about Jacob. And remember that Jacob loved Rachel and he only wanted to marry Rachel, but he was tricked into marrying Leah too. And because he loved Rachel and not Leah, there was jealousy in that household. And remember that God heard the prayer of Leah, and so he gave Leah some boys, and she thought, now my husband will love me? But that didn't change things, did it? And remember that she wanted what Rachel had. She wanted the love of her husband. And Rachel wanted what Leah had. She wanted the children. And so there was all this jealousy in that household. But the Bible tells us that after Jacob had 10 sons, that then God heard Rachel's prayer and gave her a little baby boy. And that little baby boy, his name was Joseph. And oh, Joseph grew up to love the Lord and to trust him. Even as a small child, you are not too young to start loving and trusting God. And of course, anytime his father wanted the truth, he would ask Joseph. And remember that if you tell the truth, 
just to get someone in trouble, that's tattletelling. But if you're asked by your parents or an adult what happened, you must tell them. And Joseph always told the truth. And of course, what he had to tell wasn't good. And his brothers hated him. But it wasn't because Joseph did anything wrong. They hated him for doing what was right. And you know, the Bible says, though, that the father gave him something that made the brothers even more jealous. They, he gave him this coat, and the coat meant that he was the overseer. He was the one in charge of his brothers. Well, some of his brothers were 40, and they did not like that, and they became even more jealous and envious. And remember that where envy exists, there's confusion in every evil thing. And there are ways that you can get rid of your jealousy. Things may happen. You may be in a situation. You're not treated fairly. God says there's ways you can handle it. You, first of all, you pray. And then you, you look for something good in the person you're jealous of. And then you give them a compliment. And then you thank the Lord for that which you have. But the brothers didn't do that. And you know, the Bible says that Joseph, he was treated so mean. And of course, he didn't have God's word. You know, God's word says to you, I will cause all things that are bad that are happening to you to work together for your good. Joseph didn't have the words of the Bible. So God gave him something special. God gave him a dream. And remember that, that the brothers her sheaves of wheat bowed down to his, and he just told the dream. But the brother said, ah, oh, that means that someday you think we're going to bow down to you. Well, that's the last thing they wanted to do. Well, then, of course, God gave him another dream. And that other dream was that the sun, moon, and stars bowed down to him. And his father, his father thought, whoa, is something happening here? Remember, God had spoken to Jacob through a dream. So Jacob knew that God can speak to you through dreams. Jacob also knew that he was not the oldest son in his family, but God had given him the blessing. Maybe God was going to give the blessing to a, one of his sons that was not his oldest son. Well, of course, when he got that dream, the Bible tells us that the brothers could not say a nice word to him. And you know what, kids? All that time, God was teaching Joseph something. Do you know what? God was giving him the strength to be long-suffering. And you know what long-suffering means? That's exactly what it says. Suffer long. Suffer for a long time. Do you know, sometimes we pray, and when we pray, we want the problems to just go away and go away immediately. But Joseph, for 17 years, he lived in that household, and his brothers treated him mean for 17 years, and God did not take him at that point up until we're going to find out what happens today, but God left him right there. You know, there's a little oyster, and you know when that little oyster sometimes open up, a little grain of sand will get in. And that little grain of sand just irritates that oyster. And so the oyster sends out this protective film and it covers the oyster to protect it from the irritation. You know what that protective stuff forms? It forms a very valuable pearl. And those that have not had any irritation, they don't form pearls. Do you know what long suffering means? Do we said already to suffer long and it's to patiently accept the hurts and difficulties in your life. You will have hurts. You will have difficulties. Don't think that everybody's life but yours is just exactly perfect. They aren't. God gives everybody difficulties, and we are to patiently. We can't say, oh, I prayed about it, and it's not gone, and it's been a whole week now. It may go on for years. So we are to patiently accept the hurts and difficulties, knowing 
that God allows them for a reason. He says, I want to build character in you. And God was allowing these hurts and difficulties in Joseph's life for a reason. So you remember that the brothers, they were sent to a place called Shechem in order for their sheep to have pasture. And so the Bible tells us though that at Shechem, these boys had done something that they shouldn't have. They had been very, very mean to the people that lived there. So Jacob, their father, he was very concerned about them. They had been gone. And so, you know, yes, he loved Joseph the most, but he also loved his other sons. He didn't even want to wait until they got back in order to find out what was happening to them. And so the Bible tells us that he said to Joseph, he said, Joseph, would you go and would you see if they're all right? Now, for Joseph to go, he was only 17. He would have to travel 50 miles by himself. And we know that in that country there were lions and there were bears and there were robbers. And that would be very scary to sleep out in the open knowing that you could be attacked. Do you think Joseph would go? and check on his brothers who never said a nice thing to him ever. And then, of course, when his father was there, we know they were nicer, so now he was going to go. Do you know what he said? He said to his father, he says, Here am I. I will go. And so he says, Go, go, go and, and bring me word. Go check on them. And so he sent them from Hebron down here, they had to go past Bethlehem and they had to go up here to Shechem. Well, Joseph, of course, went as his father had asked him to. Well, God protected Joseph and as it probably took him about two to three days, he finally made it to Shechem. Well, you know, he looked all over because, you know, 10 brothers and, and Flocks, large, large amount of flocks would be easy to find. But as they looked all over, why? He couldn't find them anywhere. But there was a young man there. And so the young man said, you know, you seem to be looking for something. What is it? And it says this man found him just wandering around in the field. And he says, what are you seeking? And he says, well, I'm looking for my brothers. They were 10 men and uh, uh, they came here to feed their flocks. Uh, did you happen to see them? And the man says, oh, oh yeah. Oh, those 10 men, yes, with their sheep. Oh, yes, yes. You know what? Yes, I, I saw them and, and they were here and, and I heard them. And they said, let's go to Dotham. And so here was Hebron where they lived. Here was Bethlehem. Here was Shechem, and 15 miles this way was Dotham. But kids in Dotham, there had not been any problem. Do you think Joseph was going to say, you know what? I'm sure they're okay. And I'm, I'm doing exactly what I was asked to do. I checked on them, but uh, now I think I can go home. No, you know, we don't think that Joseph did anything but love his brothers. He said, no, I want to go. I've come this far. I want to give father an accurate report. I want to tell them, my brothers, that my father is thinking about them. So he went that extra 15 miles to Dotham. So Joseph goes to Dotham. And the Bible says that while he was yet a great distance away, they saw him coming. They say, hey, isn't, isn't that our brother? How do you think they recognized him? Yes, they recognized him from his coat. And so the Bible tells us that they conspired together to... Now, let me tell you, remember, the Bible said where envy and jealousy are, which is our heart, there's every evil thing. And they had done nothing to beware of jealousy. 
And so they said to their own, about their own brother, let us kill him. <gasps> oh, you know, that was terrible. And then they said, the dreamer, he's coming. You know what they were probably sitting there thinking about? Those dreams. We hate those dreams. And I'm sure they must have thought, oh, I just wonder if those dreams really weren't from God. But we don't ever want to bow down to him. Never. It's never going to happen. Let's just make sure it doesn't. If we kill him, then it's never going to happen. But the Bible says that. And then they even said, you know what, we'll just kill an animal and we'll dip his coat in the animal's blood. And then, you know, Father will just say that some evil beast killed him. Well, that was a lie, wasn't it? Well, Reuben, who was the oldest, he said to them, he says, no. He says, why, why should we kill him? You know, let's just, um, no, let, let's just throw him in this pit. This, 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 this empty pit right here, it's empty. We could just throw him in and he would die of starvation. And, and, and at least then we wouldn't have killed him. Now, secretly, Reuben was thinking, I'll come back and I'll save him. And then everything will be all right. You know, kids, when there are people and they are planning things that are wrong, that are evil, it is up to you to stand up. And maybe there's somebody at school that's being bullied or called names or treated wrong. Or they say, oh, let's play a trick on somebody and, and then destroy some of their property. You need to stand up and say, no, that's not right. You might not be able to stop them. You might end up getting in trouble. But that is what God wants us to do. We do right regardless. We don't do right just because we think things are going to turn out great for us. God says, you stand up for right. Reuben, he almost did, but not quite. And so, yes, yes, it would have been hard for him to go against his brothers. But that is the choice he made. And that is what God wanted him to do, to stand up for Joseph. And he didn't do it. Oh, I hope you do. Well, the Bible says that as Joseph was coming closer, he was thinking, oh, I'm so glad to finally see my brothers. I've been traveling for three days. But the Bible tells us that when he got close to them, that they jumped up and these 10 older men surrounded him. And the Bible says that they took him, they leapt upon him, and they grabbed his coat and they tore it off of him and they threw him down into that well, now I want to say that Joseph, I'm sure he said, don't stop. What will father say? I just came to check on you. And, and why are you doing this? You know, and, and they wouldn't listen to his cries. They wouldn't listen to his pleas. They just threw him down in there. And they says, we want to get rid of you. Now, you know, kids, after they threw him in, the Bible tells us they just sat down and ate. You know, kids, when you're really upset, sometimes you're not even hungry. Oh, it didn't bother them one drop. They heard what he was saying. They absolutely could not care less. And so, now Reuben, he probably didn't want to be any part of this. Maybe he says, you know what, I'll just go watch the sheep. So he was gone, but the rest of them were there. And so the Bible says that as they were there, the Bible says, behold, whoa, a surprise. Now what happened that they were surprised at was God protecting Joseph when he didn't even know it. And it didn't look like it. But when they looked up, they saw a caravan. And it was camels and 
a bunch of men, and they were on their way to Egypt. They were going to be selling spices. They were traders. They were trading different things. I will give you this, you give us that. And so they said, why don't we just take Joseph and sell him to those traders, and then we'll be rid of him. Because in those days, slaves were treated very mean. And if you were a slave, you probably did not live very long at all. So they got down in there in that well, and they brought Joseph up. And Joseph, when he saw maybe the rope, he thought, oh, they've come to their senses. They're going to let me out. But when they let him out, he was probably shocked to see that there were those Midianite and Ishmaelite traitors. And there were the brothers. And their brothers are saying, all right, how much will you give us for him? You know, he looks healthy and yeah, come on, how much? And the Bible says that the traitors said, oh, you know what? Uh, we'll give you uh, 20 pieces of silver. And the brothers didn't even haggle with them. They didn't even barter. They said, we don't care about the money. Their father was rich. They didn't need money. They just wanted to be rid of Joseph. And so, kids, there was Joseph. And now he had suffered living with his brothers. And now he was going to go to Egypt. Don't you think he had prayed and asked the Lord to help him? And kids, when they would take him to Israel, the Bible tells us that they put him in shackles. Shackles is when they put something around your wrist. We don't know if it was leather or metal, but if they lead you along and they're pulling you by the wrist, it's going to get so sore and just blisters. And maybe they had shackles on his legs too. And, and they took him to Egypt. Do you know what? God, he knew he was going to suffer even longer. He had already been suffering. Do you think he was going to patiently accept the hurts and difficulties? He, he thought, what have I done? I, 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 and he hadn't. He hadn't done, done anything that made him deserving. But he was he going to suffer long, patiently accept the hurts and difficulties? And, and this is what God wants you to do in your life, knowing that God allows them for a reason. Do you think there was a reason that God had for him to be sold by his brothers and treated so mean? Well, we're going to find out. But he left and he was on his way to Egypt. And you know, the Bible says that then the men, they set back down. And as they set back down, then Reuben came. And Reuben, well, actually, they were gone by this time, I meant to tell you. And Reuben came, and he looked into the well, and he probably said, Joseph, Joseph, I'm here for you. But he didn't hear anything, because Joseph wasn't there. Joseph had been sold into Egypt, and he didn't know it. And when Reuben saw that, he was so upset, he tore his clothes. Could you only tore your clothes? It was what they would do in those days to show how upset you were. That was how upset he was. And you know, their sinful jealousy had caused them to do this terrible thing to their brother. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that the heart is deceitful. That heart is the part of you that thinks and feels. It's deceitful and wicked above all things. Jeremiah 17, 9. Who can even know it? So you're thinking these brothers were so mean? The Bible says you have a heart like that in your heart too. And that sinful heart separates you from God. And if you don't take care of it, you don't take the steps you should to overcome envy and jealousy, and you don't purpose in your heart, Lord, I'm going to suffer long. I'm not going to try and get back at people. You know, I'm going to love them. I'm going to bless them. I'm going to do good. I'm going to pray for as long as you have me here. If you don't do that, your life 
can be ruined. There's many people, instead of turning to the Lord, they will turn to drugs and, and then they'll play video games all day and they, they just want to, oh, I just don't want to hurt and I don't want to feel. And, and they'll do things that destroy their life. But you know, the Bible tells us that Joseph didn't do that. He waited patiently for God. But now these brothers, they had a problem. And their problem was, what were they going to tell their father? Well, remember that they had a plan, and what was their plan? They were going to kill a goat and take the coat and dip it in the blood and give it to the father and tell him that a wild animal must have gotten him. So the brothers, they came back to their father. And you know what, kids? They do, like some of you do. They were very careful that everything they told him was true, but they told him the truth with the intent to deceive. And if you tell somebody the truth, but you're, you just twist it, you know, you just twist that truth. And you know, it's like, okay, all right, but it's not exactly, not exactly right. And you just twist that truth. And maybe you say, oh, well, every single thing I said was right. But if your intent was to deceive, then you have a lie. And that's what the brothers did. Because they said, oh, we found this coat. Well, of course, where did they find the coat? They found it on Joseph. And so they said to the father, they said, uh, oh, uh, do, do, do you uh, know whether that might be your son's coat or not? Well, of course they knew it was a son's coat. And Jacob knew it. And he said, it is my son's coat. And then they didn't have to tell him anything because he says, oh, an evil beast has eaten him. And, and Joseph has been torn into pieces. And Jacob then tore his clothes out of his great sadness, and he put on sacrifice. And the Bible says he mourned for many, many days. And you know, all his sons and all his daughters, they got up and they tried to comfort him. Now, Father, now it's going to be okay, Father. It'll be all right. But he says, no, I will die mourning for my son. You know, kids, there was nothing they could do to comfort him. And they were hypocrites because not one of them says, we know where he's at. Oh, we'll tell you what happened. Here, let me help you. Oh, I'm so sorry. They were sorry. They're the ones that had done it. And you know, the Bible tells us, though, that Jacob, you know what? He could not get over the fact of his son being eaten, he thought, by an animal when he saw that coat but you know what, kids? God says, I have a plan. When bad things are happening to you, you have to remember there is a God in heaven. And this God in heaven, he has a plan and a purpose. And he may want you to suffer difficulties for a long time. But he says, I will work it out. He says, vengeance is mine. Nobody's going to get away with anything. I'll make sure of that. You just leave it in my hands. And you just trust me. Well, Jacob didn't do that. We're going to find out next week if Joseph was able to do that. But kids, if you don't, if you just fret and complain and worry, the Bible says that's sin. Even though people have done wrong things to you, if you react in the right way, wrong way, then that's sin on your part. And of course, the Bible says we've all sinned, but oh, the Lord Jesus Christ, God's only son, he came down. And the Bible says that without shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. And so Jesus says, I'll shed my blood for you. You know, they shed the blood of that little goat and pretended like that it was a wild beast. And you know, God says, Jesus will shed his very own blood so that your sins can be forgiven. And you know, kids, when our sins are forgiven and we stand before God, and you know what, I, I stand before him just innocent. I'm perfect. I, he, I, he's covered my sin. I have no sin. But you know what? The Bible says that for you to get to go to heaven, you have to have done something right. But he says, you don't do anything right. Your righteousness is of filthy rags. Whoa. And so he says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to completely forgive your sins. And then I'm going to give you a coat. 
my son's righteousness. It's like you have his coat on. People look at you. I look at you. And I am looking at you as if you were the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, of course, kids, when God completely cleanses our sins, he wants us to grow, to go to church, to read our Bible, to pray, to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, to pray for those who spitefully use us, and to bless those who curse us. Oh, he is the one that can give us that strength to do that. You know what? You are going to have people that treat you wrong. You're going to have a choice. Am I going to do the easy thing? The easy thing is to fight back, call names back, get angry back. God says, are you going to trust me to do the right thing and the hard thing? And that is to suffer for a long time, knowing that those difficulties are from me. And if Jacob had known God's will at this point, he would be rejoicing. No, we don't know God's plan in the midst of suffering, but he knows it. And he says, I can tell you right now, you can rejoice because I know what I am doing. You know, kids, if you've never before said, oh, dear Lord Jesus, I've sinned. Take my sin away. Cleanse my heart. Give me your spirit within. You can do that. And he says, I will forgive your sins. I will come and live inside of you and you will be clean. Now, if there's somebody in your life and they are mean to you, maybe they live in your house, you know, just say, okay, Lord, I can't do this. You give me the strength and change your life. Don't let envy and jealousy grow in your heart. Purpose in your heart with God's strength that you're going to love your enemy. You're going to bless those who curse you. You're going to do good to those that hate you. And you're going to pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. And you will be a new person that brings glory to God. Oh, I'm so glad you came today for this very important lesson. You're going to need it. We're all going to need it. Oh, I just hope that you pray and ask the Lord to help you do the right thing this week. I love you. I'm so glad you tuned in. I will see you next time. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.